Welcome to the Sacramento County Office of Education, Cielo Valerzi Recognition Ceremony. My name is Graciela Garcia Torres and I'm with the Sacramento County Office of Education. This is our ninth annual um, recognition ceremony for our students and happy Cinco de Mayo and Teachers Appreciation Week. So what is the state seal of fine literacy? So as you see, it's for eligible graduating high school seniors and these students um, had to demonstrate proficiency in English as well as a language other than English. And the way that they demonstrate uh, their proficiency in a language other than English is through world language courses. They have to have four years plus an oral exam. They need to pass um, or pass an exam that is like the AP language or other exams, as well as Sacramento County Office of Education is very proud to have an offer a language uh, exam in 23 different languages for students that have no other viable pathway to demonstrate the proficiency in a language other than English. We are very proud of our diversity. We have over 120 languages represented in our country, I mean, in our county. And so we uh, offer these, um, this test so that then we can be more representative of our diversity. So we have our California English Learner Roadmap and the vision, as you can see here, is that English learners fully and meaningfully access and participate in a 21st century education from early childhood through grade 12. That results in their attaining high levels of English proficiency, mastery of grade level standards, and opportunities to develop proficiency in multiple languages. And this roadmap, even though it speaks to English learners, many of our students who receive the state seal are English only students that then pick up on another language and they are here and we are here to celebrate that aspect as well. Here you see that um, from, you know, this two years that have been very stressful and very difficult for our families, for our teachers and for uh, our students, we have been able to continue to grow this program thanks to the efforts of our districts and thanks to the efforts of the families. And this recognition is an attestment to your perseverance, to your hard work and dedication. And so here you see the numbers from the two different years in last year in 2020 and this year in, in 2021 and how we've been able to grow. And we have, you know, even 52 students that have earned the seal in three or more languages. So congratulations, students. Congratulations to your families and the efforts of the staff in our school districts. What do you get with this recognition? Well, there, uh, the state seal of literacy is a certification that you have fluency in a language other than English as well as English. And so as the County Office of Education, we offer this certificate that is individualized uh, for you as a student. And then the state, the California Department of Education offers an insignia, a golden insignia that you see here that will be um, put into your diploma. So we uh, are very proud to um, do a publication, a program. And so now Tyler is going to help me put a, a link in the chat for you to be able to access our program for this year where you can find the names of your students, the names of these districts and, and all, of, all of the languages that are represented. So families, please find the name of your student here. I'd like to mention just a few students that are part of our close knit family. And that is my niece, Stefania Garcia, who's getting the uh, state seal for Spanish, as well as um, Julie Perry, who's getting the seal for Spanish as well as uh, Alicia Chapa, who's getting it for Spanish and um, French. Congratulations to all students and all families. This is again an assessment of your hard work dedication because one of the heaviest cognitive loads where we put the brain to work, it's demonstrated that it's to learn a different language. So thank you for your hard work. And without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to our superintendent of schools, um, David Gordon. Thank you very much, uh, Graciela. And, and before I begin, I want to take a moment to thank you and your outstanding team for putting together this wonderful program. And you're helping so many of our young people gain opportunity and the increase in the seal in Sacramento County and statewide has been amazing. So, so thank you for all of your great work. And as the county superintendent, I'm thrilled to welcome everyone and share this event with you. Uh, even if we can't be together in person and we're virtual again, 
but it's so encouraging to see schools opening up, teachers and young people returning to schools, and we've really turned a corner with, uh, with COVID. And I really want to give a shout out to everyone involved in our education system, from our uh, administrators, our board members, all of our teachers, our classified employees, everyone who pulled together to keep the system going and now to come back to, to school in person. I've been to many schools in the last couple of weeks and it's amazing uh, to see young people smiling out, out in playgrounds, uh, in classrooms. So whether we're in person or virtual, today is a celebration of outstanding achievement on the part of our young people, the mastering more than one language. And I'm so proud that our county, Sacramento, we rank in the top 10 in the state for students receiving the state seal of biliteracy. So many of the people you see here today are to be thanked for that. And all of this, of course, comes at a critical time in the history uh, of our community and in the history of our nation. Uh, we desperately need to learn to come together as a nation. And learning another language is a great pathway into better understanding other people, other cultures. Uh, my own granddaughter, one of my granddaughters earned the seal uh, a few years ago, and she was so proud and it has helped her so much as she's gone through, uh, through college and now into, uh, into graduate school. So congratulations to all of our students, but also to your families for all the love and support they've given you, and also to your teachers, administrators, and other school staff who helped you along the way. I'm proud to say, as uh, Graciela showed in one of the slides, nearly 2,400 Sacramento County superintendent, uh, Sacramento County students earned the seal this year in 24 different languages. And of those students, 42 demonstrated proficiency in multiple languages. These are all seniors who have demonstrated English competency and competency in another language. Other countries, unfortunately, have recognized for a long time that being bilingual is not only a critical workforce skill, but even more importantly, as a nation, we badly need to celebrate our different cultures and come together in unity. And this is a goal which I think bilingualism and biliteracy can help us so much. So congratulations to all of you students on this outstanding accomplishment. A good luck to you in the future through your mastery of multiple languages. You're developing a different vision of our nation and our world that speaking other languages enhances immeasurably. And now I'd like to turn the program back to Graciela Garcia Torres, who will serve as this year's events, event host. Uh, and Graciela, thank you again for all of your great work in leading this program in Sacramento County. Thank you, Superintendent Gordon. Your support in this process in this program has been invaluable. There's no question about what that has done in our program. That's how we've also been able to grow it so much. Thank you. Mil gracias. And now I'd like to introduce to you, I have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker. Dr. Orlando Carrion is professor at the University of California at Davis. He is, works in the teacher education uh, program and his interests include teaching and researching within the decolonial and social justice framework. Dr. Carrion is published in the field of literacy with a focus on how discourse of race, culture, ideology, and power affect Black, Indigenous, people of color, and other historical subordinated communities. Current topics of interest include effective teaching practices of Latinx youth, ethnic studies, education, teacher education, and culturally responsive, sustaining and humanizing practices. He is a former middle school teacher in the Napa Valley, and he has over 15 years of experience as an educator. He is currently dedicated to develop Grow Your Own Teacher programs where local communities can create pathways for local students to become teachers. So 
Dr. Carrion is son of immigrant parents with roots in Guerrero, Mexico. He currently lives in Napa with his um, life partner, Angela, and his two daughters, Florentina and Camila. Without further ado, bienvenido, welcome, Dr. Orlando Carrion. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. I am honored to be in community with you today. I would like to begin by thanking the Nisenan, Maidu, Miwok, and Miwok Indigenous peoples for allowing us to be guests on their land today. I would like to thank Superintendent David Gordon and Superintendent Dr. Jorge Aguilar, and a special thank you to Graciela Garcia Torres for the warm invitation today. Thank you very much. Mil gracias a ustedes. I would also like to thank the many familias who are here today supporting your children as they receive the prestigious seal of biliteracy. As someone who's raising two beautiful bilingual daughters, I know firsthand the commitment that it takes to raise bilingual children. I'm reminded of all the visits to the library in search of bilingual books, nervously navigating and searching for exciting grade level reading materials, and having the fortitude and wisdom to stick with the bilingual education model when many of your friends and family chose to pursue other programs. I hope today that you can take a moment to rejoice in the fact that you did it. You gave your children the gift of bilingualism. Class of 2021, please take a moment to look at your guardian's eyes and say in your own love language, thank you. Today I'll focus on what I call the three gifts of bilingualism. Uh, bilingualism as the gift of responsibility, bilingualism as a gift of love, and how to sustain the gift of bilingualism. So beginning with the first point, bilingualism as a gift of responsibility. So for the students, while your parents started you on the path toward bilingualism, the fact is that the journey started before you were born. Not too long ago, many people advocated and struggled so that you could reap the benefits of a bilingual education. For example, in 1968 in Los Angeles, hundreds of high school students just like you walked out of their high schools in protest of the poor schooling treatment that they were receiving. Among the demands of student protesters were bilingual courses, ethnic studies courses, and teachers that reflected the cultures and languages of the students. In 1974 case, Law versus Nichols, Chinese families in San Francisco argue that San Francisco Unified was not providing an equal education to students who did not speak English. Law versus Nichols requires school districts to provide effective bilingual education while significantly increasing funding to ensure effective learning of English and the maintenance of native language. In 1994, Proposition 227 legally banned bilingual education in California, leaving students with only one year to demonstrate proficiency. And if students did not gain proficiency in one year, students and schools were blamed for their academic failure. California's Proposition 227 also spawned the passing of English-only laws across the nation, including um, states that were heavily populated with Spanish-speaking youth, such as Texas, Arizona, and Massachusetts. It wasn't until 2008, after much organizing by parents just like the ones that are here today, and civil rights organizations that California began to move away from viewing language uh, diversity as a problem to viewing language diversity as a gift. The shift was not easy. It took mobilization of parent clubs, chambers of commerce, letters to the editor, editor youth advocacy, media, and other grassroots uh, movements to recognize the seal of biliteracy. Finally, in 2011, legislation was passed to establish the California Seal of Biliteracy. Today, 42 states and Washington, D.C. have adopted the Seal of Biliteracy. Close to 100,000 students have received the seal, and 66 world languages are represented. Class of 2021, you have not only been granted the gift of bilingualism, but the gift of responsibility. It is important that you are crystal clear of the historical sacrifice that was made for you to be here today. As soon, it will be your turn to carry the torch of advocacy and bilingualism forward. The spirit of bilingualism was passed on to you so that you understand the cultural gifts of your community. 
so that we can build a world that is more understanding, less discriminatory, more capable of empathizing, and more capable of being servants of the public good. Your responsibility, class of 2021, is to pass this gift forward, as it is ultimately a gift of love. This leads me to my second point, that the gift of bilingualism is fundamentally a gift of love. You are here today, class of 2021, because somebody loved you. Your parents and the generations of advocates that came before them wanted you to know yourself and your community deeply. For those of you that were born speaking a language other than English, your parents and the generations of advocates that came before them set you on this path so that you could be culturally rooted, so that you can never forget where you came from, so that you honored your cultural roots and the ancestral wisdom carried in the DNA of your family's language. They chose this path for you so that you could speak and learn with your abuelitos and your abuelitas, your grandparents. They chose this path so that you could feel the cariño, the love, when one of your family says to you, mijo, mija, eres una bendición, son, daughter, you are a blessing. They chose this path so that no matter what someone says about your cultura, deep inside, you know who you are. For those of you that grew up speaking English, in addition to understanding your own culture at a deeper level, your parents and the advocates that came before, before them chose this path for you so that you could understand the sacred interconnection that you have with your community. In other words, your well being is directly connected to your well being of your community. When your community hurts, you hurt. And when your community thrives, you thrive. The law of interconnection is expressed beautifully by the Mayan concept of in la Kesh, which was uh, turned into a poem by the Chicano playwright Luis Valdez. And it goes something like this Tu eres mi otro yo. You are my other me. Si te hago daño a ti, if I do harm to you, me hago daño a mí mismo. I do harm to myself. Si te amo y respeto, if I love and respect you, me amo y respeto yo. I love and respect myself. Never has this concept been more important for us to practice as a society. Never has it been more important to practice understanding our desires, our wants, our needs, our hopes, and cultural gifts. During a time of blatant xenophobia toward our Black brothers and sisters, our Asian American and Pacific Islander brothers and sisters, our indigenous and immigrant brothers and sisters, never has it been more important to practice cultural empathy and solidarity. Learning the language and cultural gifts of our communities is fundamental to reaching a deeper level of humanity. Class of 2021, if you can walk out of here with one concept today, it is this. Language is identity. What you do to language, you do to people. Language is what we use to pray. Language is what we, are, we use to express our most deepest and intimate emotions. Language is what we use to co uh, communicate our deepest desires, our vulnerabilities, and aspirations. When you love your language, you love yourself. When you love the language of others, you love them. When you love the sounds of your first and last name, you're developing self-love. I reminded of the, of the video called Facundo the Great. And if you get a chance to watch it on YouTube, it's, it's well worth it. It tells the story of a Chicano kid who enters school where everyone's name is changed from Raimundo to Raymond, from Maria to Mary. But when Facundo came along, they tried to shorten it. But when the administrators and teachers tried to shorten it to FAC or FAC, they found that they couldn't do it because it would sound too much like the F word. So Facundo was the only kid uh, whose name did not get changed. While it is a story that is humorous, there is cultural wisdom here that we need to learn. By taking the time to learn our names and our language, we learn how to trust each other. If you take time to get to know me, my language, my family, we can begin building a relationship that is built on mutual respect, a relationship that is founded on love rather than fear. This is the only way that we're going to transform the struggles that plague us today. My third and final point revolves around the importance of sustaining the gift of bilingualism. 
The point of sustaining reminds me of the seven generation principle that was developed by the Iroquois nation long, long ago. The Iroquois nation used to make decisions based by asking how their decisions was going to affect seven generations into the future. But it was for the Iroquois nation, it was not only important to look seven generations ahead, it was also important to look seven generations back and to really under, uh, to really um, try to understand and listen to the wisdom of the ancestors. So are, were they listening? Are they listening? It was about being ethically and morally rooted to passing forward the cultural gifts of our communities. Understanding how you will sustain your bilingualism requires this type of foresight. So the first question that you must ask to root yourself is, how are you in relation to the community that provided you the gift of bilingualism? My wife, who is a family nurse practitioner, once told me that being bilingual allows her to be there during a time when her patients are most vulnerable. Being able to speak the language of my community, she says, when they are most vulnerable is why I'm blessed to be bilingual. And I remember when I was a young kid, uh, I had four brothers and sisters. And since during that time, my father was always working. So we navigated this world with my mom everywhere. We went everywhere with her. This was a time before cell phones. This was a time before navigation systems, right? This was before Siri, any of that, right? So together we would have to ask directions. And first she would send my older brother. And my older brother would come back and he's like, I didn't understand the directions. Then they would send my older sister finally to me. And together we would collectively figure out how to get my mom out of this situation, right? Whether it be traveling, whether it be at the doctor's appointments, whether it be talking to lawyers, okay? So guess who were the translators? It was us, seven, year, seven years old, eight years old, translating for our, our, our first community, our family. So helping others navigate the world, being in relation with your community, your family has given you all the tools needed to use your bilingualism for the common good. So I ask you, what kind of doctor will you be? What kind of lawyer will you be and who will you serve? What kind of teacher will you be and how will you be in relation to the communities that helped you become bilingual in the first place? In order to sustain your linguistic gifts, you have to be in relation to the community that helped you become bilingual. In order to sustain bilingualism, you're going to have to make a concerted effort to form bilingual friendships and partnerships that are based on respect, trust, humility, and love. You will have to ask yourself, who do you partner with to understand the world better? Do you form friendships with the people that honor these communities that raised you? These are all the questions that have to be asked in order to sustain your gift with moral and ethical integrity to live in a pluralistic and multicultural society like the one we live in today. In closing, class of 2021, you are living during a time when your skill set is needed more than ever. The gift of responsibility that you have been granted is indeed a gift, only if you use it to serve. The gift of love that educated you needs to be passed forward so that generation, seven generations from now, the gift of bilingualism, respect, and love is thriving in our communities. Class of 2021, your parents and the communities that came before you are so proud of you. May you continue to be guided by the spirit that brought you here, a spirit that is based on love, respect, humility, and solidarity. Know that you are loved. Know that you are a blessing. Know that your community supports you and that we are all proud of you. In La Kesh, Tlato Kamati, gracias. Thank you very much. Orlando, Dr. Orlando Carrion, thank you so much for that message of just so uh, timely, so powerful, and so incredibly right on in terms of what bilingualism, multilingualism is. And these students, you know, they had to demonstrate that they are also able to read and write in the language other than English. So congratulations, class of 2021 and Lakesh. I think I said it right. Uh, you are my other me. And students, please remember and families the gift that we are receiving uh, today and to carry it on as a legacy 
And I think the first one was uh, bilingualism as a pathway, right? Thank you for those three main points. Thank you for coming and doing this for us out of your own time and uh, sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias. And now I have the privilege of um, introducing Mirna Pelayo, who is here as a representative of the Sacramento Regional California Association for Bilingual Education. We are very pleased to have this partnership. We dreamt of this partnership where we could offer scholarships to our um, California State Seal of Bilingual students. And so this was the year to do that. And so we are so grateful to this organization for supporting us in this stream. So without further ado, Mirna Pelayo, please tell us about the students and the scholarship. Great, thank you. I'm extremely honored to be able to be part of the ceremony. As you stated, my name is Myrna Palayo and I'm a principal at Pasadena Elementary in the San Juan Unified School District. And I serve as a secretary of the California Association of Bilingual Education, Sacramento Regional Chapter. Our mission is to educate, empower, and ensure educational equity for all. We are dedicated to helping young people succeed both personally and professionally. We received 226 applications and each were deserving of recognition. Today, it is my pleasure to present three $1,000 scholarship to such deserving individuals and I will read a short excerpt from the essay they submitted. I'm gonna start with Selena Enriquez from Elk Grove High School. Walking through the doors of the courtroom would end up changing my life and help blossom a unique passion of mine. I began to recognize the power of advocacy and how activism comes in many individual and unique shapes. The next one is Q An Nguyen Lee from Rosemont High School. I have realized that there are narratives that deserve to be honored and preserved and I want to be the one to do it. I plan on breaking into the journalism field with the intent to promote change. And our last one is Paola Sanchez Ramirez from Cordoba High School. The issue of mental health is one of the greatest issues I see being ignored within people of color communities. Ignoring the issue of mental health prevents individuals from being able to express themselves and follow dreams that may seem accomplishable. Thank you. I will hand it back to our presenter, Graciela. Thank you so much. Uh, and again, you know, um, I know it was a tough selection, but thank you so much. I'm sure you selected the best. And these students have been already notified and they will be, uh, the CAVE organization will be in touch with them. On this screen, you see the participating districts in the Sacramento County. We are very grateful to all of our coordinators that have dedicated endless hours in ensuring that we get this many students recognized in 2021. And today we have eight of our, all of our representatives with us that will be giving you background and information about the state seal of literacy program that they offer contextually in their districts or charter programs. So, Thank you so much for all your hard work. And the first one is going to be Garrett Lefsack from uh, Elk Grove Unified School District. Thank you, Graciela. Um, first, I just wanna say thank you to Superintendent Gordon and specifically Graciela Garcia Torres for putting on this wonderful event um, and being part of the process um, to honor our amazing um, seniors who have been able, able to earn this prestigious award. So um, additionally, I just wanna thank um, our superintendent, Chris Hoffman, and our Elk Grove School Board for continuing to, and our program director, Lucy Bollinger, for emphasizing and elevating the assets that our multilingual learners bring to our classrooms, to our schools, to our communities as a whole. Um, while we know the path to get to this recognition may look different from me for each student, um, that impact that they have is just incredibly felt for each individual. And, but we know it also extends, extends beyond the individual and affects the community um, as, as a whole in the school. So, um, we know, we believe strongly that all students benefit from the promotion of different cultures along with the different multilingualism that's brought forward. Um, and I, I know I, I'm just honored to be able to be sharing this with this 
share in this with these amazing young adults um, as they begin to conclude one chapter and start to look forward to the next. Um, as you can see for Elk Grove, um, we are so excited to, to share that we have 498 um, young adults who have earned this uh, seal this year, which continues to grow in our, in our um, district. And we hope that that number, it'd, it'd be really magnificent to watch it go over 500 next year. But just so excited to honor these 498 individuals this year. Um, and we have 15 languages represented. We had 59 um, students earn this recognition through the SCOE language exam, which was an additional um, step and in, in process in it. And so just to see the work that's been done, um, just want to be able to celebrate it in all those ways. Um, I, I feel like if I, I wouldn't, I'd be remiss to not do a shout out for our teachers, an amazing job that they continue to do in this unique year. Um, and to promote this in our young adults, specifically our world language and our English learner teachers, um, as they do um, just an amazing job with e each of these, these kids. Um, and a shout out to our counselors and administrators who continue to advocate for the students um, and you know, promote this type of thing so that the recognition can be made. Um, and then specifically, as, as, as Dr. Carillon said, um, just a shout out to the families who um, continue to promote the multilingualism in your, fa in your, um, in your family. Um, and, and I can't, I'm not gonna pretend to say it better, what a gift that, that multilingualism is, right? And um, hopefully it's something that continues to carry, um, carry you forward and is just a wonderful thing to look forward to. So um, for me individually, I, this is my first opportunity to be a part of this process this year. And I've just I'm blown away by the, the quality of the young people who continue to be a part of this process, um, who engaged it, who seeked it out, who did the work. And um, congratulations to each one of you. Um, it's well-deserved and can't wait to see what you do uh, next steps as graduation and we move forward from there. So thank you, Graciela, and uh, congratulations, Elk Grove students. Thank you, Garrett. You did a wonderful job. It, you couldn't even tell it was your first year. So thank you for your hard work, dedication, and congratulations, Elk Grove Unified School District Scholars. Next, we have Bolson Cordova, and I invite Elena Cabrera, who has been with the Sacramento County Office of Education since we started doing this process in 2013. Elena. Good afternoon, everybody. What a privilege it is to be here again. And as um, Ms. Graciela Garcia Torres has stated, I have been, um, our district has been participating in the Seal of Biliteracy since the beginning, and it has been a privilege and a joy all bundled up into just a lot of excitement for our students. Um, what a great opportunity there is for everyone involved. On behalf of Folsom Cordova, our superintendent, Dr. Sarah Kaligian, our board members, and all of our members of cabinet, we are Heart, we send our heartfelt congratulations to our students, our state seal of biliteracy recipients. We're deeply proud of them. We know that this is uh, not only hard work, but, but important work as was shared in our keynote speaker's message. It represents so much of who we are and what we're going to be and continue to put our effort and energy into in a meaningful way and connecting people and connecting the work that we do. I wanna, um, you'll notice that we have five years of um, just reflecting on our seal of biliteracy recipients. We're really proud to have in this year, 286. What I wanna point out is that over the past few years, we've grown our numbers of recipients. The message and the word has gotten out. Students start to get excited about it um, way before they're in high school. And certainly if they haven't taken, really make it a priority to take that coursework. Um, our families um, start to ask questions and we're, uh, we're definitely uh, proud of our students. We range in languages. This year we had 14 languages represented and 38 of our students uh, were able to receive the seal of biliteracy through the language exam. I want to do some shout outs too because this effort to really identify our students and help them through the process cannot be done without a number of people. Of course, they're teachers, but I want to make a real um, strong emphasis on their families, those that support them in the language development, whether it's from day one when they come to this earth or as they join um, you know, a class to, to learn language. It's a joy to see these students develop and really become uh, biliterate. I wanna um, also thank, like I said, their teachers, their, their parents, um, the students, because it takes a lot of energy and effort. Um, in getting this work done, we cannot do it without the all of the work done by my team here, especially Guadalupe Castellanos, who has actually coordinated the exams, the assessments and all of um, the pieces that, that take place. Our counselors, Betsy Anumu, uh, Nicole Dethridge, uh, Sarah 
Cavero, excuse me, Sarah, and Christine Kleinley, who have helped our students at the high school complete the process. Uh, again, on behalf of Folsom Cordova, we are really, really happy for you. We can send our deep congratulations and we wish you the best. Adelante and la queche. Thank you, Elena, for those wonderful words and the recognition to your team and the efforts um, in Folsom Cordova. Part of the effort of the um, testing is that we collaborate uh, within our districts. And so the collaboration and, and sharing the resources. So, so Folsom Cordova, thank you for sharing your resources with all of our districts as well. Next, I'd like to invite Laura Berrio from Natomas Charter School, and um, she will tell us about their programs. Hello, and thank you, Graciela, for um, putting this on for our, um, our students. Um, I'm Laura Burial. I'm the Teaching and Learning Director at Natomas Charter School, and we are thrilled um, that we have been able to have the Seal of Biliteracy for two years in our school, and that um, we have been able to have um, almost 20% of our graduates are um, are get, earning the seal of biliteracy. Uh, we're a small graduating class of about a hundred and about a hundred. Um, and so it's really great to see the students really striving for this and you know also taking this on in the um the kind of crazy year that we've had. These students have really persisted and worked hard and um and made this something that they were dedicated to. So I'm very, very proud of our students. Uh, we had um, 17 graduates this year, three languages. I know we've already got a list of students that are excited um, to take on this challenge next year. Um, I would like to thank um, our counselor, uh, Susanna Shank Tiffany, who was instrumental in this process and getting um, the kids um, rolling on it, as well as our um, language teachers, uh, Mr. Gareth Love and Ms. Angelica Barajas um, and Ms. Peggy Kell. And um, we hope to see a lot um, of students joining in the ranks and we hope to someday have five, uh, five years worth of data and see our numbers going up. Um, but definitely uh, thank you to the SCOE group and Graciela for supporting this and making this possible um, for our small school um, but it's even at a small school, every graduate is important. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Congratulations, Natumas Charter School Scholars. Next, we have Natumas Unified School District, and I invite Mary Lynch to tell us about their program. All right. I have unmuted and started. Uh, is, is that working? I don't see. It's working. Okay. Yes. I just don't see my uh, face or anything. So I, I think you turned off your video. Oh, okay. There you go. There, okay. Hi, I'm Mary Lynch. I'm a director in Natomas in the office of the chief academic office. Um, in Natomas School District, Superintendent Chris Evans and the Board of Trust Trustees annually ensures that resources are set aside just for the State Seal of Biliteracy program. As you can see from the below chart, can you guys see the chart or, there we go. As you can see from the below chart over the course of the last few years, Natomas has really jumped up in numbers. We started in 2016, uh, 2017 with uh, about 128 students earning the state seal. And now you can see that we are gonna be hovering over 176 to 175. So we're really proud of that. Without the investment uh, from our superintendent and making sure that we have resources, that would not be possible. So um, it's really important to call out. As you can, um, this year, um, I wanted to recognize a few people, a few of our students, actually. Um, first and foremost, um, I wanted to recognize our student board member who's here with us today, Estef uh, Estef Estefania Garcia. Thank you for being here today. She serves at, um, as the student voice in Atomas and puts a lot of time and energy and is always very well versed in bringing, calling out the needs of our English learners. So I first wanted to recognize her and thank her for being here. I mean, there are four students in Atomas Unified who earned the state syllabi literacy in two languages, 
which means these students are leaving us going out into the world speaking a total of three languages. So from Intercom High School, we have Caleb Barajas, French, Spanish, English. Ivan Lee, Mandarin, Cantonese, English. Shu Hong Zhu, Mandarin, Cantonese, English. And from MP3, we have Ishram Gil, German, Punjabi, and English. So I just wanted to call that out and say that that was just amazing. And we are so proud of all of our students, of course, but the fact that we have um, an amazing um, multilingual uh, student body uh, this year just makes us so proud. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. And yes, behind each one of these numbers is a story. It's a life and it's a name. So yes, we, um, we recognize you, we, we thank you, uh, families and students. And I just wanna say that Estefania Garcia is my niece. And Mary, I don't know that you knew that, but she is my niece. So I'm so proud of her for her uh, work this year as a board member. Next, I'd like to invite Dr. Jorge Aguilar, Superintendent of Sacramento City Unified School District. And I just wanna say that not often do we see uh, superintendents take their time to come and um, give their honor to their families and students. So, muchísimas gracias por acompañarnos. Dr. Aguilar. Thank you. Can you hear me okay, everyone? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I, I don't have the video. Um, I think you're controlling it, but um, good afternoon, everyone. E thank you. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes a todos. Uh, first of all, I want to just uh, say thank you to the organizers uh, Superintendent Gordon, you and your team for their support of this amazing effort that I think um, as our keynote speaker spoke about uh, is something that um, our students and our families uh, should feel a lot of pride uh, for themselves and their family, as well as Azarel Iñiguez, uh, who is our district's multilingual coordinator for your efforts, um, Azarel, uh, in making sure that um, our students were recognized uh, this afternoon. I do want to acknowledge that uh, we have two board members that are joining me this evening, uh, board member Leticia Garcia, uh, as well as uh, board member trustee Chinua Rhodes. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening as well. Uh, and on behalf of our entire board, of course, I want to congratulate and recognize the amazing uh, accomplishments of this year's um, students who are receiving this wonderful uh, seal. Uh, certainly, I want to recognize and amplify the assets of multilingualism of the 582 students who together, I'm just so proud of this, uh, speak 17 languages in Sac City Unified School District. What an incredible accomplishment. Over 500 of our students pre-qualified for the seal of biliteracy through co coursework in English and world language while 75 of them qualified by demonstrating their home language proficiency on the SCOE language exam on top of having uh, a high GPA. Uh, these students had to demonstrate exceptional discipline and skill in these world languages through their coursework or by showing mastery through the world language exam, uh, which is both oral and written. Uh, and on top of that, I do want to congratulate five of our students who received the seal in two or more languages, as well as one of our students who earned the seal of their mastery in three languages. Isn't that amazing? Uh, I'd like to recognize some of these students, uh, starting with Sitai Chai, Liang Yu Zhu, uh, John Ru Li uh, from CK McClatchy, who all earned the seal of Mandarin and Cantonese. Uh, Kingfa Liu from Hiram Johnson earned the seal in Mandarin and Cantonese as well. Also, Sarsanga Amin from Luther Burbank, who earned the seal in Dari and Pashtu. And Fatima Amin from Luther Burbank, who earned the seal in three languages, Dari, Farsi, and Pashtu. Again, we applaud our students for their hard work, and we look forward to their continued success. I look forward to seeing them giving keynote addresses, uh, such as our wonderful keynote this evening as well. Uh, and I do wanna just highlight uh, those three pillars that he encouraged us to remember and honor 
uh, for um, the benefits of multilingualism, which is the responsibility that we carry, uh, the love that comes with that uh, responsibility, and our commitment and our obligation uh, for our communities to sustain uh, this beautiful gift uh, that we're able to share with the world of, of multilingualism. Uh, thank you again for, uh, for uh, allowing us to be part of this ceremony and congratulations to our students and their families. Thank you, Dr. Aguilar. It's uh, our pleasure to have you with us and thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule to give this message to the familias and the students on this um, honorable day for the, for the families. Thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Next, we have Paula Villasquez from San Juan Unified School District. She is the board president and she will be uh, presenting to the, the students in San Juan. Thank you, Graciela. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Wonderful. Buenas tardes y gracias por estar aquí. Felicidades. Estamos muy orgullosos de ustedes. Good afternoon and thank you for being here today. My name is Paula Viescas and I am president of the San Juan Unified Board of Education. And uh, with me this afternoon in the audience is Dr. Mike McKibben, Ms. Zima Creason, and Ms. Pam Costa, my fellow board members. And beha on behalf of the board, our superintendent, and our entire San Juan family, I offer my sincere congratulations. We're so very proud of you. This year in the San Juan Unified School District, we're excited to award 430 seals of biliteracy to our students, and that covers 11 different languages. We have 17 students who earned seals in two languages and six students who earned seals in three languages. What a tremendous feat. I'm so incredibly impressed. We've consistently grown the program every year, and this year is no different. I want to acknowledge our Assistant Superintendent for Educational Services, Dr. Deborah Calvin, and her fantastic team, including our program director, Ms. Burkhart, for their tremendous support of our students. This year, we are excited to recognize more students than ever, and I can't wait to watch that number grow. Thank you so much to the staff that make this possible, both the SCOE staff and our San Juan team, our families for your tremendous support of our scholars, and thank you students for challenging yourselves. We're so very proud of you. Congratulations, class of 2021. Thank you all. Thank you, Board President Villasquez. Congratulations, San Juan Unified School District Scholars. Next, I am inviting Tamara Pianit from Twin Rivers Unified School District. Hi, hey, Graciela. Um, thank you so much for, for having me. And on behalf of our Board of Trustees for Twin Rivers and our Superintendent, Dr. Steve Martinez, I would just like to really congratulate all of our students who have earned the State Seal of Biliteracy this year. And um, we have had the program in our district since 2014, um, but this is my first year coordinating. So wanted to also thank Graciela and SCOE for all of the support you've given our district as, um, as they've coordinated this year. Um, also want to recognize our counselors who helped um, organize the seal by literacy in our district, as well as many of our teachers and it's teacher appreciation week. So a special shout out to our teachers. Um, we appreciate you and your help and all of the support that you have given students. And on this slide, you'll see we have 138 students this year that earned the state seal of biliteracy um, eight languages that were tested. And um, we are especially proud of this number. 121 of our state seal of biliteracy earners are RFEP students who have reclassified. So they came into our district um, as English learners without English um, proficiency and are graduating with proficiency in two languages. So that kind of accomplishment is, um, is beyond amazing. And the, you know, the benefits of the bilingual brain, the research on that is, um, is also amazing. So we couldn't be more proud of our students and their accomplishments. Um, the keynote speaker spoke about bilingualism as um, a gift of love. And I wanna share that I um, personally tested a lot of these students through Zoom, 
many of them in their bedrooms um, between working two jobs, many of them working two jobs to support their families during this time. And I just can't tell you how much hope I have from this class of 2021, this group of students that I individually sat with for each of these tests. Um, they are well deserving of this gift of love and they are people that will go out into the world and share this gift of love. So couldn't be happier and more proud of, of all of our students. So um, big congratulations, Twin Rivers Unified students who have earned the state seal of biliteracy. Thank you, Tamara, for those wonderful words. And yes, you know, like I, I'll reiterate, there are stories behind every one of these numbers. There are names behind every one of these numbers, and there are families. I'm going to ask um, Tyler if you would please, in the chat, drop one more time the link to the program that we publish um, so that families get to see the student's name uh, and their languages, and they get to find their name um, because I know that is the very important aspect of this to highlight that that name for for our students and our families. So um, then I'd like to invite our next uh, person, and that is uh, Dr. Gerard uh, from Visions in Education. Thank you. We appreciate um, here from Visions in Education being in, invited to be part of this program today. We want to congratulate all of our seniors that are graduating who specifically earned the syllabi literacy. For Visions and Education, this year we've had a 64% increase over last year, the number of students who have received the, this award. Specifically, um, we have 61 students who have earned it in seven different languages, Arabic, American Sign Language, German, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, and Ukrainian. We also have five students who earned it in multiple languages, which were Romanian, Russian, and Ukrainian. And we are super proud of these students. It's a large increase in our program, and this has been a major focus to ensure that our students are college and career ready. Also, we'd love to honor our students as this is an opportunity to celebrate the great diversity of our students in our community. And these skills give our students, um, help them as unique individuals, to enrich our community. Um, and that allows us to embrace their culture, um, many of them, or our culture through the language that they've chosen to learn um, along with our school culture. And we appreciate their great work around this and we wanna congratulate them for that. We also wanna thank Sacramento County Office of Education and Dr. Gordon for, um, in, for supporting this program and also inviting us to be part of this presentation. I also want to thank our wonderful teachers, our testing coordinators, our administrators, and also in our program, often our families are so important to um, the learning of our students. And so the, the families and the great support that they've given their students through the years. We have some of the students here who have gone through junior college, some of them who have gone through um, Saturday school, many students have moved forward with their languages in various ways. And one other area that we just want to celebrate is that we also have students who have earned, earned it specifically in sign language, and that's a unique thing in our school. And so we're proud of all of our students. We're excited for your graduation, and we're excited to hear of all the great things that you do as you move forward. And we're proud that you're able to take these skills and enrich um, your lives and those around you as you move forward post high school. So thank you again, and I'll turn it back over to you, Graselia. Thank you so much, Dr. Gerard. Uh, we appreciate your kind words and congratulations to all of our students, class of 2021. And we, we have heard that we cannot do this work without acknowledge, um, acknowledging the great work of our you, the student, this is an attestment of your perseverance, your hard work, and the families and the support that you receive from your family, from the teachers, the counselors, and administrators that are involved in this process. Our coordinators, uh, state seal of literacy in our districts and charters, thank you so much because you have put in the endless hours and you see that it has paid off. And of course, our language examiners. Thank you to the board members who uh, attended today. And we'd like to end um, with three quotes from different students. So I'm going to, uh, I invited several voices 
And so the first quote is going to be um, read by one of our coordinators. Thank you, Graciela, happy to do it. Four years ago, I watched with admiration as my sister received her state seal by literacy in Mandarin. At that time, I was determined to achieve the same distinctive honor, allowing me to step into another culture. From Breck Pashal. Thank you. Next quote. Obtaining the seal by literacy means a lot to me, as I have been learning the language that is common on my father's side of the family. Obtaining it shows that I have put forth the work and effort to learn the language. Brennan Paleo. Our last quote. Obtaining the state seal by literacy to me means that my struggle of learning English as a second language has finally paid off. Even though I had times where I would mix up English and Spanish, I did not let that affect my learning, and now I have something to prove it. I didn't give up in one language or the other, and I most definitely didn't forget my Spanish-speaking roots by the end of high school. Adriana Enriquez. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. So here's my contact information. Uh, thank you, families. Uh, thank you to our keynote speaker, Dr. Orlando Carrion, and our CABE local chapter for the sponsorship and the scholarships. Congratulations, students. Congratulations, families. And um, again, you know, remember that through every one of your efforts to continue to share the wisdom of multilingualism, multilingualism. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon, everyone.